There's nothing like hot bread. I remember coming home from school and smelling it in the air and being starved. Four o'clock, school was out and a mile from home. So by the time I got there, I was starving and the bread was hot. And I got some with butter, which mother made from the cream we got from the old cow. It was very good bread. It was kept in the drawer in the big cabinet she had. It had many drawers and many places to hide things, like 25 pounds of flour in the bin up above, which was used to make the bread. Bread was started at night with a sponge, with yeast and flour that worked all night to get enough zip to go tomorrow for seven loaves of bread, which mother made while she was doing her other chores. But we always had beans on bread day, a big pot of beans on the back of the stove with a bacon rind in it. But it always tasted so good and hot with the fresh bread at night. It's a good memory. I like to make bread too. I can remember different times when finances were a little low and if I decided to make bread, everybody thought they had a wonderful meal because we had homemade bread for supper. Might not have had steak and whatever, but we had bread and it was homemade. It was good. I like to make bread. I like to make it for Craig and Dad and whoever else stops by. I like to make enough so I can give a loaf away if I have enough left. At the end of the week, I can give somebody a loaf of bread. And over the years, I've learned how to not make white bread out of white flour, which is probably very good, but not especially good for you, in spite of what my mother thought. Because during the Depression days, the WPA gave away whole wheat flour to families. And we were one of the participants in that great D. And my mother thought we were underprivileged because we had to eat that wheat bread, but she didn't know how to make it so that it was light. And didn't know what ingredients to make in it. She'd never been taught how to do anything but white bread. And so we had whole wheat bread, which is probably very good for us considering that all of our other food items were not necessarily good for us, but the whole wheat bread was nourishing. I like to make bread. I've learned how to put good ingredients in it, but eggs and things that aren't usually in bread to add extra protein and chopped up fine walnuts to give us more protein and toasty flavor. I enjoy making bread. Okay, it's time to make the bread. We start out with lukewarm water, but we start out with one cup of hot water. But first I check it with my finger. It's just right. So we'll use that water. But we'll use four cups. Two cups. Three cups. Oh, 
I just had enough four cups. And into it I'll put sugar because the yeast needs sugar and the bread needs a little sugar for flavor. So this is a quarter of a cup. So I'll put a half a cup of sugar in the batch for four loaves of bread. Then I'll put in two tablespoons full of dry yeast. which I keep in the refrigerator. And I'll add four eggs, one egg for each loaf. Whoops, I've got a piece of shell, which is why you break it in a cup in case you get shells in the bread. Do you notice that four eggs makes one cup full of liquid, which means you'll probably get nearly five loaves of bread. My daughter bought me this big mixer so I don't have to do it by hand anymore. I turn it off. Let it mix the yeast a little bit. And we'll add some of the whole wheat flour because it kind of needs to soften a little. I don't measure, I just kind of look at it. But probably if you measured, you'd find out I put about six cups of whole wheat flour in there. Thank 
if you notice toward the end of the mixing that it starts to build up around this section of your beater you know that you've got it just about right it's about time to check with your finger and see if you have enough flour in you can tell if it has some give but you don't poke your finger clear in the dough
Brings back when I touch it. I believe it's ready. A little flour on your hands doesn't hurt to help get it off of the This saves so much time over having to do it by hand, but it, you don't develop near the muscles. I'll get my spatula and dig down in there. And make sure every bit of flour is away from the center of the bowl. There's a little divot there for the mixer blade to work on. And it doesn't let the flour down in there. See, there's flour in the bottom. better with your hand and the blade here. So what I'll do is pour a little oil in there, which I'd always put in the bowl to keep it from sticking as it rises, which actually adds probably another fourth of a cup of oil to the dough in the long run. See, feel some of the nuts that went to the bottom and got stuck in that little hole. There they are. Okay, it's all nicely oiled now. And in about a half hour it'll be up because the yeast works very fast much faster than the yeast cakes that our grandmothers had to use. My mother had a friend, a very old lady, who gave her a recipe on how to make 
dried yeast so that she'd always had yeast even though they lived many miles from town. And I can remember mother making it and cutting it into little squares in a cookie sheet. And it seemed to me it had cornmeal in it, but I was too young to take notice of the recipe. But none of my sisters remember it. And no one is around that remembers that recipe anymore. If anybody knows it, I would be so glad to have it. Just because if anything ever happens in our country, so we have a trucking strike or something and we can't get what we need, we would always have yeast to make our bread. And if the trucking strike happens, there won't be any bread unless I make it. Now we're ready to cover it with a piece of uh, cling wrap or saran wrap or plastic wrap, <laughs> whatever they call it. But it keeps the bread from getting a crust on top, a dried crust as it rises, which you don't want. I'll put it on the counter and we'll watch for it. It's been about 25 minutes. I think it's crazy. Let me lift it. Ah, oh, it's nearly full. In another 15 or 20 minutes, I'll push it down and let it start again. It's been 20 more minutes and it's ready to push it down. Let it rise twice like that. It's hard to push it down all the way because it's alive. It's pushing back. Another 40 minutes or so it'll be ready to put in the pans. Okay, it's been about 40 minutes and look what happened to my bread. Went over the top. We'll just put it all back in the bowl, push it down. Take, take the bubbles out of it as much as you can, the big ones. It's ready for pans. I thought maybe I'd fix a couple of little buns for the people that like one that's hot when it comes out of the... This is butter. Butter works really good for greasing the pan. Better than oil. Oil kind of slips away from it. You can also use lard or something else that's solid. So, We'll make a couple of small ones for the people that like a little taste while it's hot. Turn it in under just slightly, pushing it in, and then flatten it out. Put it in the pan. You 
Use a knife to cut this if you want to, but it works good. If your hands are strong enough to pinch it off. Since there's three of us here, I'll make three of these. Set it to rise. These are small pans, but they're what they're what I have. Be sure and get the corners good when you do the oilings because they'll stick, especially in the corners. That's the way it's done until all the loaves are done. You have to kind of gauge how much will go in your little pan. And be sure you press it into the corners or else there won't be any corner on your bread. They're more than double. So just make it a little bit like you think you want the run to be when it comes out. Just keep tucking the ends under. Tuck it in. Continue till you finish all the dough in pans. A dark pan will make your bread brown faster than a bright pan. I especially like a dark pan like these. But eventually a bright pan will turn dark if you don't scrub it too much. These two pans belong to my mom. So they're precious even if they're ugly. They baked a lot of loaves of bread. When we divided up all of mother's things, my brother decided that since I was the one who baked bread, I got mother's pans. Since he was the executor, we let him make the decision of who got what. I got a little bit more dough this time. The pans are just a little bit longer. If you want to brush it with butter on top, you can when it comes out of the oven. And that'll make a soft crust on the outside. If you want your crust to be crunchy, crispy, you don't put any butter on it when it comes out of the pan. I usually leave mine crispy. It looks like I have a tiny little bit left. 
So I guess I'll just divide it up between the pans. You can do that by just lifting it and putting it underneath and working it in. It's already started to rise. I can tell they a lot more have risen because there's crunch. Okay, they're all ready. We'll just watch them till they get up to the top again and then we'll put them in a 350 oven. Some people put it in hotter but I like it better to do it slower and longer so it's done in the middle. In about 15 minutes it's coming up. We'll let it rise another 20 minutes, maybe. Okay, it's risen. Another 30 minutes is set. Like we have five loaves and a little over. And it goes. Forty minutes later, it'll come out. It'll be brown and ready to eat. Time to take the buns out. The rest can stay in for a minute while I take a serrated knife and everybody gets a slice. Can't do it except with a serrated knife. It's hot, it's steamy, and it smells good. Slice for Dad. Slice for me. So around the edges, it's cool enough for me to taste. Mmm. That's good. Even if I make it for other people. Yummy. Mmm. Wonder why? I'm enjoying this because the Bible says not to muzzle the ox that treads the grain. That's good. Time to get the loaves out. 
My wound's hurt. Number one. See how nicely they come out when you butter the pan well. If you turn them like this, they cool better. Now if we just had two fish. <laughs> In goes lunch. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I never could quite understand it for a long time, but I realized in him was all that we needed. All the nutrition we need for our spiritual lives, just like bread is for our bodies. <laughs>